International doors. Dennis Kucinich understands the need to eliminate hate, poverty, and greed. With money in the system that's already there, America will receive proper health care. What house? What house? John Gay! John Gay! Do we have any teamsters here? Downtown Des Moines, Iowa. Go, Nick, go! Go, go! The fight is about to begin to decide which Democrat will stand against George Bush in this year's presidential election. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. When the fair people of Iowa go to the polls, they will have nine Democrats to choose from. While their supporters are outside shouting themselves hoarse, the candidates are slugging it out on a live televised debate. What priority would you give to the space program out of your presidency? You know, first of all, I've been wondering why the president would, uh, while well, we're still in Iraq, talk about going to the moon and going to Mars. Maybe he's looking for the weapons of mass destruction still. <laughs> Next door to the debate is the spin room where hundreds of journalists are waiting to see who is the first to stumble. We do have African-American and uh, Latino workers in state government. No, no, sir, under your administration, you have a senior member of your cabinet that was black or left we, we had a senior member of my staff on my no, fifth floor. No, we did not. Well, there were six members. Of the eight men and one woman standing, the candidate copying the heat is Howard Dean former governor of the tiny state of Vermont. He took classes at night to get into medical school, worked in an emergency room in the Bronx. And with his wife, Judy, Howard Dean became a family doctor, hoping to make a difference one life at a time. He became governor under the worst of circumstances and earned a reputation as a maverick and independent. Dean seemingly came from nowhere just over a year ago to become the Democrats' frontrunner. But over the next few weeks, his political future is at stake as his popularity takes a roller coaster ride. I decided to go behind the scenes of this maverick's unusual campaign. I'm Howard Dean, and I approve this ad because the truth is, the power to change this country is in your hands, not mine. I think he offers a hope. To yeah. be here and meet people who are involved in it and everything, it's just an honor. It's supporters like these who catapulted Howard Dean to the leading position in the first place. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're really excited just to let people know that, you know, what a wonderful candidate Howard Dean is and his vision for America and let them know that there's hope. Stacy is a student from Seattle, Paul is a bookie from Baltimore, Clyde has come from San Francisco, and thanks to Chris, they're all lost. Are we stopping here? No, we're, we're lost. <laughs> then what's this? I, I have no idea. <laughs> you guys, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Two and a half thousand of these so-called Deanies have come from all across America to sell their man. Uh, Governor Dean is by far the best candidate. They're part of a unique grassroots movement organized over the internet that's made them feel directly responsible for Dean's success. When they said there were people coming from Tokyo that I was like, that's that I can't, I don't have any excuses, I'm in Seattle. If someone had said in June that I would be doing anything like this, had any involvement in a presidential campaign, I would have said they were crazy. Despite their eagerness, this foursome fails to find a single Dean supporter. Yeah, I'm thinking John Kerry. We already have our answer for this one. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. We're volunteers for Howard Dean. Oh, not too bad. <laughs> Perhaps this is an ominous sign that not everyone shares their enthusiasm for Howard Dean. When I say Howard, you say Dean! Howard! Some of the biggest names in U.S. politics have come here to endorse Dean. I'm so happy to come here in my capacity as the acting president of the United States. Dean has sewn up a lot of celebrity endorsements. 
that his greatest test in the coming days and weeks will be whether or not he can win the support of the little people. We're going to have some fun in the last five days, but the fun has to end in victory. Yeah! And the victory, and the victory is not for the Dean campaign, the victory is for us, because it's time to take our country back. Yeah! Back from the special interests. This, you are going to see some tough campaigning. It is a tight race. And you're going to see people say everything. The folks in Washington have been there for a long, long time. And they aren't going to give up without a fight. But this is about change in America. This is, this the, is the heart of Dean's appeal. His anti-establishment rhetoric, pitting himself not only against George Bush, but all those in power. We are going to take America back. You are going to take America back. It's going to happen. Dean is known for saying what he thinks, a trait that has seen the media and his opponents label him as both gaff prone and angry. This is a rough campaign. You know, people have said that I'm George McGovern. Then they said I was Newt Gingrich. Then one of them said I was George Bush. One of them, one of them today. You know, then, then they spent the whole campaign telling you I was angry. And today, one of them said, well, that anger is all fake, you know. <laughs> Truth is, this campaign's not about anger. It's about hope. It's Howard Dean's outspokenness that first made him a household name. He was an asterisk in the polls until he made what was assumed to be an unpopular move at the time. He opposed the invasion of Iraq. Within months, Dean had raised more money than any of the other candidates. I'm going to call out your last name from my list um, and give you your hotel assignments, which we'll be dropping you off at. At the end of the rally, I joined the rest of the press pack on the People Powered Express, a convoy of three buses that will spend the next five days following Dean's every move. So it's your first time you've seen Dean, what do you think? I think he's a great showman, and that's a huge thing. Oh, really? What they ask? I mean, Philip Gurevich is an author and correspondent for the New Yorker magazine. He didn't really seem to say much. He said, you know, he said he's, what did he say? He said he was against uh, special interests, he was against the, the old school in Washington. Um, They're all against the old school. Everybody's against Washington. Everybody's against special interests. So is there anything there that surprised you or that felt new? I don't know. I don't. Uh, that's a good question. Um, no. Iowa and New Hampshire are the only states where candidates can physically reach every single voter. Everywhere else is too big, it happens too fast, and the whole process is filtered through a television camera. You know, there's something about somebody, some group of people, being able to actually hear what they're all saying and not with anybody telling them what to think. Joe Trippi you know, is the wizard oh, behind the Dean campaign, Saddam, the first campaign manager to harness the power the of the internet, like, yeah, and he loves an underdog. There has to be some part of the process where a guy with no money, who no one's ever heard of, still has an opportunity to become president of the United States. Um, and actually, there's a lot of history that says that's really what the American people want. There we go. That was a triple back flip. Dean started cooking pancakes for potential voters nearly two years ago. He didn't support the Iraq War, which is very important to me. Um, he, he connects with regular people. Um, These sisters traveled from Ohio and, and California just to, to see Dean speak. This is why I'm fighting so hard. I want a better American for, for my grandkids. By the time this is over, I will have been to 13 towns, had countless styrofoam-packed meals. This is a Iowa mystery meet and listen to the same speech again and again. This is about Washington insiders 
versus a campaign built on shoe leather and mouse pads, as we call it. This election is about power. The truth is, the power to change this country is in your hands, not mine. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Like all the other Democrats who hope to stand against George Bush, Dean has a serious message. The Republican Party now has control of the White House and both houses of Congress. If the Democrats lose this year's presidential election, it's likely the Republicans will also gain complete control of the courts. When these guys say that something's at stake and when you sort of like look at this and just think it's like bizarre theater, you should remember that like a lot is at stake and a lot is at stake for Americans, a lot is at stake for Democrats, a lot is at stake for Republicans, a lot is at stake for the world as a result. And, and that's what makes it sort of like kind of fabulous to watch like, you know, people in funny hats with balloons deciding those things. Hello, Paul. Howard Dean here. How are you? Great. Look, I'll get right to the point. Dean's tendency to lose his temper when criticised has made him fine fodder for comedy programs like Saturday Night Live. All right, I understand. But uh, can I make one request? Since you're obviously so hot for John Kerry, why don't you just go <laughs> Several national magazines have even questioned Dean's electability. At this stage, his fieriness and candour could either be his downfall or the key to his success. What's your price? How big a tax cut you want, baby? As the man running the show, Joe Trippi is prepared to take his chances. He's a veteran of five presidential campaigns and one of the country's most experienced political operators. I don't know. Is she there? You know, we're going to run the campaign we're running. We've been doing it this way from, um, uh, from the beginning. Everybody says, well, Jesus, that risky. It might be risky. You're not going to beat George Bush without taking risks. And we've always ran sort of a bold, different, risky campaign. We're going to get back to that and do it. But at the moment, the risks aren't paying off. The polls show Dean's ratings are in decline. His team is anxious to prevent him from doing himself any harm. So now there are few opportunities for the press to get close to Howard Dean. We are stopping at Dairy Queen in an unidentified town in the night of Iowa, <laughs> where only photographers will be allowed to descend from these highly secure press buses in order to photograph the candidate, Governor Howard Dean, procuring ice cream, which he will then bring personally onto each bus of disgruntled press and distribute to us. Although on this bus, almost everybody seems to be from France and won't vote. <laughs> now, Philip, why are the press disgruntled? The press are disgruntled because they've been driving for four and a half hours without a glimpse of the man. What, so Dean's not even in there? No, he's not even in there. There's people standing behind the counter, on the side of the counter, in front of the counter. It's all just press standing around looking at each other. What's your favorite kind of ice cream, sir? Uh, actually, it's a uh, vanilla soft ice cream cone. You guys just missed a big scoop. Vanilla? Ann Richards just announced an endorsement on Larry King Live. Oh. She said, if I had the opportunity to vote in any state, and I will vote in Texas, I'd vote for Howard Dean. That's great. Well, who's next? You gonna, if you, oh, my God, how many press people are traveling with <laughs> Tomorrow, the polls will put Senator John Kerry from Massachusetts well ahead of Dean. Dean could be very, very harmed if he doesn't win. His enthusiasm right now seems to lack the enthusiasm, the kind of size of crowds he used to be getting. To top it all off, John early. Kerry's campaign they just staged a media the coup. They brought out a man whose life Kerry saved during the Vietnam War. John Kerry himself reached into the water, pulled Rassman out, rescued him. Rassman came to Iowa today to say that John Kerry saved his life. Dean knows he's in trouble, so a day before the caucus, he pulls out what he hopes will be his trump card, his reluctant wife.
tell you how we're going to beat George Bush. With a stick! What? <laughs> On the eve of the caucus, the polls still predict a win by Kerry, with Senator John Edwards from North Carolina in second place. Dean is already being consigned to history. But this is really one of the most influential campaigns in modern American presidential politics, and they deserve credit for that. It is amazing, and it will be studied for a long time. The only thing missing was a better candidate. It's caucus day. There's nothing the candidates can do but wait for the citizens of Iowa to make up their minds. Across the state, one of the most remarkable fixtures of American democracy is about to kick off. Let's take a seat so we can get started. Here in the small town of Van Meter, a hundred or so Democrats have gathered in a school cafeteria to choose their preferred candidate. Do it again. <laughs> What's this turnout like? Oh, it's good. Great, great. This is ten times more than what the people last time was here. Yeah, really. Because everybody's mad at Bush, so... Because, um, time for him to go. Everyone here is against Bush, but not everyone knows which Democrat to vote for. Mary is one of a few in the undecided camp. No, I, I was for <laughs> Dean, and, and then I was for um, John Kerry. And then I thought, oh dear, I kind of like Edwards. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, today I'm back to Dean, so... Luckily for Mary, the campaigning at a caucus continues until the bitter end. And the Edwards is straight back there. Okay, now you move. Unlike the primaries, a caucus is a public event, not a secret ballot. We won't bug you, because you're our friend. I know. I we know where you live. No, I know. <laughs> Friends and family separate as the supporters of each candidate form groups in different corners of the same room. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and Ed is eleven. And Mary, we count you? Come on, Mary! Is this group viable? Not yet. Soon. Are you, are you surprised there's not more for Dean? Shocked. Shocked. Disappointed. My Dean people must have stayed home. Tell me. I, I'm very surprised. Why is that? You thought because yeah. he's he's ran so strong here, and I, I I'm just surprised that I thought it would at least be neck to neck with Edwards. Not. That's a huge group down there. The caucus works by a brutal process of elimination. If a candidate attracts less than 15% of the people here, their supporters will be forced to merge with a larger group. Yeah, we need you. Come on. I mean, the hard part of it is, is if, you vote, if you like the candidate, but if he doesn't have the funds to get there, where are you? Yep. You're screwed. You're back with Bush. Who wants to be back with Bush? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. You can't convince you? I, myself, am probably going to go another way. Well, that's fine. That's a, I'll come back. It appears that Dean's strong anti-war stand isn't a vote we do the You know, he voted for the war. Who didn't at that time after 9-11? Yeah. I'm not going to hold that against anybody because the time, passions were high. You know, that, that I don't even factor in because everybody was on a defensive mode. And yes, we probably should, in retrospect, everybody has hindsight, but it's always 20-20. Your viability is 15.9. So if you have 15 people, carry group, how many? 34. 34. Edwards group, how many? 56. Woo! No, 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 we use the talking later. Right. Well, what about Bonnie and Van Meter? Here in Van Meter, Howard Dean and Congressman Dick Gephardt are officially out of the race. We're 73. Okay. 76 down if I That's can quite a stunning thing. Two candidates have been simply eliminated in the first round, and then the two candidates who have been on the cover of every magazine and every newspaper in this country for six months is the people who are running for president, and the rest are all taking up the caboose. We want Dean! 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 When the we statewide tally is done, John Kerry has won the caucus, followed closely by John Edwards. 
Howard Dean has finished a distant third. Not that you'd know from the atmosphere at his after party. I'm the fat lady, I ain't singing yet. With his supporters in a frenzy of anticipation, Dean is in his bus outside warming up. But what he's about to do will raise fresh doubts about Howard Dean's electability. We're going to South Carolina and Oklahoma and Arizona and Oklahoma and New Mexico and we're going to California and Texas and New York and we're going to South Dakota and Oregon and Washington and Michigan and I'm going to Washington DC to take back the White House. The media lampooned this pumped up performance for days afterwards citing it as another example of supposedly unpresidential behaviour. We will not get up in New Hampshire. We will not get up in South Carolina. We will not get up in Arizona. Or Mexico. Oklahoma. But with his strong showing in New Hampshire, Dean's optimism might be justified after all, proving that this one-time outsider still has a shot at the White House. And Arkansas! And Canada! 